remember looking at National Geographic magazines as a kid and, and uh, you know, pictures of Africa, never really, really, I guess, never really believing I would actually go there and see these things. I had a group of students in a small clinic in a place called Mbita, Kenya. It's up on Lake Victoria. It's in a very uh, poor area called Nyanza Province. They've got a very high HIV prevalence there. There's a lot of poverty. And we were in a, in a small building that, was, that served as a, a clinic and kind of as a hospital. And the doctor that was showing us around, uh, a nice guy named Tom Mboya, who's subsequently, I still keep in touch with this man, um, he, he took us into the various parts of the clinic and said it was only a year previously that they'd gotten electricity and they didn't have running water but they get water out of Lake Victoria, which is polluted. So here they are with patients in the hospital and they don't have access to clean water. And he said to me, the shame of all of this is that there's a pipeline running along the road, maybe a hundred yards out there with chlorinated water, but the, the uh, Kenyan Ministry of Health didn't have the money to put it into the uh, clinic. And I said, well, gee, how much would that cost? And he said, oh, it would cost around 85,000. And I thought, 85000 that's a lot of money. And then I realized he was talking Kenyan shillings. And that translated to about $950. And I thought, for $950, here are these people with, without water and doctors having to work without being able to wash their hands or, or, or give clean water, bathe someone who's in sweating with a fever with clean water. And I was with some students, and we said, we'll figure this out. We'll, we'll get you this water somehow. So I came home and I uh, hit up some of my friends and my family and uh, some of the students had their family do that. And we ended up with about $1,500. And when I went back the next year, they were so delighted. And they would, the, the doctor, in fact, went over and he said, look at this. And I mean, stuff we take for granted. He turned on the tap and said, look, we have water in, in all these rooms. And he said to me, I can wash my hands now after I examine patients. And I thought, you know, here was something that, that wasn't that much money for, for us that made a huge difference. Uh, I, they subsequently told me that because that infrastructure had been improved, the, the Kenyan Ministry of Health had upgraded the facility to a higher level. And when I went back the year after, they were actually accredited to start distributing uh, antiretroviral medicines because of this upgrade. And they insisted this was because the infrastructure was, was built up. Kenesis is a, a charitable trust that we formed last year. Um, some friends of mine and myself uh, went through the legal process of setting up the trust and the application to Revenue Canada to have it uh, approved as a, a registered charitable organization. And in April last year, all that was done. So the, so the organization has only been formal since April. Uh, our goals are to uh, uh, provide funding for various infrastructure projects in East Africa that are finite and sustainable and will be community-based and, and help communities there. And uh, we have uh, African communities or people working there apply to us for funding and if we approve it, then we'll go out to raise the money to do this. Some of the things that we're working with are, for example, putting a well in a community or helping build a school or getting fresh water to a, a clinic or a hospital. And all of the projects that we've uh, taken on are uh, under $10,000 and finite and, and sustainable and we've got uh, both uh, Canadian volunteers who travel in uh, East Africa that can check to make sure this is being done and we have friends over there that follow it up as well. You know, you're always running into situations there that are uh, touching and that involve you personally. And I was traveling with these students and the students came rushing back to me and said, Dr. John, you've got to come and do something. There's a little girl down here, she's got a problem. We went, it dragged me back to the to the village, and here was a little little girl sitting on the on the road uh, with a great big sore on her leg, an open sore. And it was kind of weepy and like a scabby, but it was wet. And there were flies all over, and the flies were going all over this. And she was trying to brush them off. 
And, and there seemed to be no one looking after her. She was just there, there were some other kids around. <clears throat> and the students I was with, it was the first time that they'd actually seen a, somebody really in need and they were really, you know, we've got to do something, we've got to do something. So I had a little first aid kit with me, I cleansed this off and I dressed it and they were like, what are we going to do with this girl? I said, well, was, this is one out of millions of children in sub-Saharan Africa that has a need like this and we've cleansed this and we'll do this and we'll see how it goes. Next year, back in the same village. I go into the village and the kids really like digital cameras and so we, you take your pictures and they're all swarming around and they want to see their pictures so it's really it's really fun to go with a digital camera. And this one little girl kind of came up forward and she seemed to, wanting to kind of make some contact with me and I was a bit surprised and I started looked at her and I thought I wonder if this is the same kid that that I treated the year before and I wasn't really sure she hadn't grown very much she looked a little she looked ill and uh, while, while I'm there taking pictures and stuff, she looked at me and then she reached down and touched her, her leg. And I looked down and here's the scar on her leg from the thing that I dressed the year before. And uh, so I, I, I took her and we sat down on the edge of a, of a hill and her little brother came and sat on the other side of me and we just sat there. I mean, you, you, I don't know their language, we couldn't correspond. She sort of rubbed the hair on my arm because uh, uh, um, African men have really smooth skin, so she was petting, petting my arm, really, and looking at my watch. And we sat there for about a half an hour, and then it was time for us to go. And then I was thinking, you know, 15% of kids in Uganda are dead by the age of five, and this kid's obviously malnourished, doesn't look well, uh, isn't cared for. Is she going to be one of these kids that doesn't make it to age five? And what am I doing? I'm climbing back into a truck, going back to a field station, getting a hot lunch, sleeping in a, in a bed somewhere. And this kid's out there, uh, only one of millions that has this need. And I think about her a lot, and I think that, that part of what motivates me is that there are lots of kids like this, and you can't go and save one child, or you know, as soon as you save one child, there's another one that needs it. But if we can provide good health care, better nutrition, clean water, all the things that we talked about for a community, maybe, just maybe, we'll be able to save the lives or make better the lives of kids like this little girl named Rose. Uh, we have a website uh, uh, that's uh, kenesistafrica, all one word, .ca, and uh, people can go on there, they can make do donations using a credit card through an organization called Canda Helps, there's a link there. There's also an address where people could send a, a check, and donations over $25 get a, a charitable uh, uh, tax receipt. Uh, we have a, a book called The Colors of Kabali, which I wrote when I was there last year, that we sell for $20, and the profits for that uh, will uh, go towards uh, Canisys. We have a t-shirt you can buy online with a, uh, one of our logos on it. And, uh, and people, if they want to give a gift to someone, so if you've got someone that's hard to buy for, or whether it's a birthday gift or a holiday celebration or a graduation gift or an anniversary present and, and people say well you know make a, a charitable donation if you give a charitable donation over $25 and it's as a gift we can send you a, a an art card that you can send along to the, the person receiving the gift um, we're planning we've got in our minds some uh, fundraising events that we'll be doing in the spring and so people can kind of keep an eye on that um, so we're hoping that we'll that will gradually become better known and the people will look at us as, as one of the charitable organizations that they want to support on a regular basis. I love it. I, I, uh, uh, I really, I really, I think anybody that goes to Africa just gets hooked. It's just an amazing, amazing different culture. The people are wonderful. They, they have nothing but they're generous of spirit and they're friendly and outgoing and, and really they're just wonderful people that you can't help but want to, to assist in some way. And uh, I guess I, I, I get something out of it that I, I feel a great reward in being able to help these communities. That's, that's really satisfying and uh, so that's what I get out of it.